Hi everyone, it's Liam here from biggerblade.com. Today I want to talk to you about project planning using mind maps. Now, mind mapping is a really great technique to use in the early stages of a project to pull together those initial ideas, requirements, objectives, etc. into a coherent outline of a plan. But mind mapping is also a great way of keeping track and monitoring your progress in the project as you move through the phases towards completion. Today I'm going to show you using MindMeister, which is a fantastic online collaborative mind mapping tool, how you can both scope out those initial ideas and start building your project plan, and also how you can then set up that project plan to help you with the monitoring and tracking of your progress. So let's take a look. Okay, so I've got a really simple MindMeister map here, which is going to help us cover the topic. So first and foremost, let's come in here and look at mind mapping for projects. Well, first and foremost, I think it's fair to say we're all project managers these days. Even if we maybe haven't had the training, maybe we haven't had the qualifications, most of us in our day-to-day -day lives are managing projects of different types. And often we're managing many different projects at any given time, and often really without the training or the tools necessarily to do it. And this is where mind mapping software is really going to help you a lot in terms of taking control and giving you somewhere that can help you manage projects, but without the need for these big heavyweight project management tools. Mind mapping software like MindMeister is great for building out the planning at the early stages of your project, capturing the ideas and the requirements and scoping out the phases and the sequences and the actions that need to happen. It can then also help you with keeping track of your progress, really simple ways of seeing how far through the process we are, but also helping you to stay connected in the big picture and the small details. We can zoom out in our mind map at any time to see where we are, and then of course we can zoom in on the particular details. And that visual structure really helps us to keep the big picture and the details connected up in our minds and in our team. Mind mapping software is also really good at helping you to adapt to change. Very rarely does the project run exactly as you might have hoped. So adding new information in, changing and updating a mind map can be much, much easier than trying to do that in Excel sheets or Gantt charts or other kind of tools that you may have tried to use for projects. So keeping track and monitoring our progress is really helpful. And then finally, mind mapping is a great way of involving others in the planning of your project. Whether you're using remote uh, sort of Zoom calls or things like that to discuss a project or in person, it's a really fantastic way to see how ideas connect and for individuals to build on each other's ideas and add their knowledge to the plan all in the same place at the same time. And that's going to help us as a team to understand each other's perspectives, what each other is doing in the project, and hopefully keep everyone on the same page. If you're using online collaborative tools like MindMeister, it means people can also collaborate in the same mind map at the same time, which is a great way, again, of bringing all of that perspective into one place. Mind mapping software is a really great alternative, therefore, to the heavyweight project management tools that most of us simply don't need. We can get away from Gantt charts and timelines that maybe don't give us the holistic whole picture view of the, the project. And we can get away, as I've seen many times, from people trying to plan complex projects in spreadsheets, which just doesn't really work very well. So let's take a look next at how we can actually go through a project planning process using MindMeister as our example. Okay, so in terms of getting started with our project planning, you've really kind of got two ways you can go about that. You can either start with a totally blank mind map, or my particular suggestion would probably be to use a template. If we were starting with a blank mind map, we could start with something that just looks like this and say, uh, my project, and just using the, the return keys, the enter key in my Meister, I could start to capture things like the who, uh, the what, the when, uh, the what, uh, where, for, how, for example, just to start thinking about my, my project in terms like that. I could say who's involved, so maybe Liam is involved, maybe Graham is involved. And just using insert and return in the MindMeister map, I can start to capture this basic information. But obviously getting off the blank page and, and trying to choose what these main question headings can be, it may slow you up and maybe takes a little bit more time than's worthwhile. So I quite often suggest just going and finding a template either in the MindMeister or your software library, or of course using a site like biggerplate.com where there are thousands of templates and examples that you can use as your jumping off point. So if we wanted to just start building basic information, we could add the who, the what, the when, etc., like I was just showing you. And then what we can also do is start to make that information our own. We can start to add some of the images, the colors, and the icons that make a mind map maybe a little bit more of an interesting, engaging way to build up a project plan. So if we take this as an example, 
let's say our project is to plan uh, an event for our business. Now, again, I've got a really simple template here that enables me to start building out information. Even if I don't quite know what the end project plan is going to look like, here's where I can begin just filling in maybe some of the blanks. So if our project plan is around a conference, I could jump straight down here into the scoping and say, what's included in the project? Well, maybe finding a venue is included, Maybe what's excluded is maybe the, the marketing of the, the conference. So I can very quickly just start to build out my ideas. Maybe I start to think about possible locations. Uh, maybe we're thinking international, we're going to go to London or Paris. But very quickly, we can build up our ideas around any one of the topics that comes to mind, including things like key people, uh, description of the, uh, maybe it's a two day event. Uh, the purpose is to maybe engage our partners or customers perhaps and we can just start to build out that basic information but then what we can also do is really start to personalize that and make it our own we can change the the colors of our mind map using uh, different functionalities we can add images so for example we can come over into the menu in MindMeister and uh, give ourselves any one of these sort of images within the product to uh, uh, sort of inform our, our, our map and make it stand out a little bit more. Make our information a little bit more visual, a little bit more interesting. We can customize the, the mind map and, and choose our, our colors and our topic uh, shapes to just make things a little bit more personal, maybe to our company or to our team or even just to me as an individual and start building out that project plan. Now, obviously, this is not going to start looking very good and we're not going to build this much up more than this. So we can jump back to our, our main presentation mind map and just look at a more developed example. So if we come back to our, our presentation mind map, we can then start to think about building the plan out a little bit more. Now, really what we want to start doing here is gathering extra information and then starting to maybe define the actions and the to-dos and the tasks. So in terms of gathering information, we've got lots of functionality within tools like MindMeister to add a lot of depth to our project plan, even in these early stages. We can use things like the notes feature, which enables us to put uh, lots of extra info into every topic and you can just add these topic notes onto any topic and it's a great way of just adding a lot of extra information into your mind map into your project plan without creating too much clutter and overloading ourselves other things we can do are perhaps include hyperlinks on certain topics so for example if i was looking for uh, maybe companies or speakers that could maybe come and uh, uh, deliver work at my event or presentations, I could save uh, hyperlinks into my project plan that would maybe take me to that particular website for that particular company. So we can start to pull important or useful information right into our project plan just using really simple functions in the product. Similarly with attachments, we can bring in documents from our computer and from others that means we get all of the key information right at our fingertips in the project plan and we don't necessarily have to go hunting around so much uh, for whatever document it is we need. So I can save PDFs, Word documents right here in the mind map and then just click that to jump off to that particular document. Now, if our um, project is an event, we could be saving uh, venue information, catering menus, uh, PDF quotes and invoices all in one project plan, meaning everybody has sight of the important documents all in one place and all connected in with this structure that shows us the big picture and the details. In terms of then starting to define some actions, we've also got great opportunity to start marking and tracking the progress on certain tasks. We can even assign owners to tasks and, and make sure between us as a team we understand who's covering which tasks. And we can even go as far as assigning due dates and things like that within our mind map. So how might we start to use some of that in our event plan? Well, let's go to a slightly more developed view of our event plan that we were working on earlier. Okay, so here we are back at our, our event plan, but you'll see we've really built it out a lot more now. We've got some images in these main topics, and we've really started to build out some of these items like the, the scope. We've started to think about venues. We're thinking about men, materials, food and beverage, the, the event program. And we've also started to in, uh, include things that are, uh, are going to be excluded from the scope. So really simply using a few key headings, we've started to build out the basis of a pretty useful project plan. And we may have done this by ourselves or if we're collaborating with others we can have multiple inputs into this particular map and now let's start to think about some of that other information we might include maybe starting to assign tasks and actions so 
down here in schedule, we've started to build out some of the phases. Now, this is where using other project management tools, people quite often go straight into the scheduling and they haven't necessarily done all of the brainstorming and thinking around that before they get into the schedule. And that's what can get so messy is you start scheduling things and then you think of something that maybe needs to change. So you have to reschedule everything. If you take the time using a mind map to build out everything in advance, including things like your objectives and your constraints, it then means when you get to schedule, you've got a much broader and clearer idea all in one mind map of the things that you need to keep in mind during your scheduling. If we then get into the scheduling we can start to identify real sort of tasks and activities. So we've got activities and milestones here, we've got uh, things to do with the program. So maybe we've got to create an outline program. If we come down into phase two, we've got some activities around the venue. So we could say initial research is going to be done for example, by Liam. So I can assign that to myself in this mind map and I can even put a due date on it and say that's due by the 31st of July. And then I can add this little marker that I can keep track of how far through that process I am. Now in my master, I could also keep track of the venues I find. I could say here's venue one, venue two, venue three. Maybe that starts to become my shortlist of venues for our conference project. Now using the hyperlinks and the notes, I could add a lot more richness to that. So perhaps I've saved the, uh, the, the website uh, for the venue one. I could just use that hyperlink and again, just go uh, www, I don't know, Windsor Castle or whatever it might be, wherever it is, we're going to go and host our event. The link is going to be saved there. And if I click that off, we go to a website that's not Windsor Castle, but you see my point. Equally, we could also start to put together key documents and again, just storing them in the same mind map. So we can say venue hire, AV um, options, all in one document. And this is where we could start to bring in some of those notes uh, um, and hyperlinks and dropping maybe files from our computer right into the, uh, the the mind map so we have everything we need and everybody in the team can see that even if Liam is the one owning the task of doing the initial research, they can see how far through I am and they can also see all of this extra depth and information in the project plan. So as the project builds up, we can keep track of how far through each of these phases we are. We could even mark our progress at this high level and click through as we make progress. As we go through phase one, we're then into phase two, et cetera, et cetera. And MyMaster is gonna make it really easy for everybody who's involved in this project to update their part of the mind map, to update their actions and keep people uh, informed with what's going on without overwhelming them with all the things they don't need to know about. The great thing with mind mapping software when it comes to projects is being able to zoom in on the sections that matter to you and that you wanna work on at the moment and hide everything else that's not quite relevant. But by pulling all of our key information for the project into one simple visual structure, it's gonna help us keep track of that big picture view, but also those tiny details like the venue AV options for our conference event. So I hope that's been useful as a really quick look at how you can start to do really simple project planning and actually project management using mind maps. Using simple tools and simple functions within mind mapping software like MindMeister, you can build up really comprehensive plans that can help to engage your team in the project planning process and then also in managing and maintaining your progress as you go through the project towards completion. Hope that's been useful. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please get in touch with us. For more mind mapping templates, tutorials and training, go visit biggerplate.com of course. And in the meantime, best of luck with your project planning using mind maps.